Drink beer, it's good for you. Hello and welcome to the video. Happy New Year if you are watching this in early 2020 also. In this video I'll be giving the English barley wine my full guide treatment. I will begin with the history and then move on to BJCP notes for competition before sharing a recipe writing guide and one of my own tried and tested recipes to this style along with recent brew day footage. So let's start with a little history. You may feel that English barley wine has a long and rich history, and in a way it has, though this particular style title only came into use in a beer known as Bass No. 1 in 1870. The name was simply given for marketing purposes, but people liked it, so it stuck. It must have done well though, because by 1877 Bass became the largest brewery in the world, with an annual output of 1 million barrels overall. These types of strong English ales do however go back a very long way, with names like Old Ale, Double Ale, even Double Double Ale, as well as Strong and Stock, but also as Stale, which seems rather odd these days. But these are all expressions used to describe what essentially these days is an English barley wine. As I'm sure you can imagine, these types of beers benefited hugely once the use of hops came into play, offering a much needed balancing for these sweet styles. Another very important point to make is that many incorrectly think of barley wine as just a dark style of beer. The reality is very different with many varieties of colour available. Some parts of England had much more focus on lighter versions than others. Strong English beer styles have enjoyed a great deal of love and appreciation in British history and these days there are examples of these styles found from breweries all over the world, these shown on screen now being of particular note. The English barley wine's popularity has led to a sister style of the beer known as the American barley wine. I will not be covering this in any detail in this video, I will save that for its own video, but I will mention now the key differences between the styles as follows. Firstly, it should be understood that English barley wine is balanced between malt and hops. English version also has more fruity flavours delivered during fermentation due to the English yeast. The American version is more hop orientated and more bitter. Just another simple fact for your interest, American barley wine dates back to just 1975 when the Anchor Brewing Company released their first version. Personally, I'm a fan of both types. I believe they are both fantastic in their own right. Let us now look at a condensed version of how the BJCP see this style for competition. You will note that this is a very wide open style. Let's start now with aroma. Very rich strong malt, often with caramel or toffee. Moderate to strong fruitiness, usually with a dark or dried fruit character. Hop aroma is often mild and is typically floral and earthy. Soft and rounded alcohol, some rich character that is bready, toasty or has molasses. Sherry notes on aged versions are common and part of this style. Appearance, a wide colour range from rich gold to dark brown, could involve ruby highlights, low to moderate off-white head which may have low head retention. Flavour. Complex, strong, intense, multi-layered malt flavours with bready, toffee and biscuity. In paler versions, darker types tend to also be nutty, deep toast, dark caramel and or with molasses. Moderate to high malt sweetness that finishes either dry or sweet. Low to moderately high hop flavour, often floral, earthy or marmalade-like. Mouthfeel. Full-bodied and chewy with a velvety, luscious texture. A smooth warmth from aged alcohol should be present. Carbonation may be low to moderate depending on age and conditioning. Overall, a rich malty complex flavour experience that lends itself to a beer that you sit with and enjoy more like a spirit. I have now added at the bottom of the screen the BJCP Vital Statistics and I have also added the BUGU Ratio details for the style to the right hand side middle. This represents all the BJCP information now. Many of my regular viewers find this a useful screen to print out, so go for that if you feel for it. Let us now look at recipe writing to this style. You'll be very pleased, I am sure, to see how simple it actually is. I will begin with the grain bill. Traditionally, this style is as simple as pale ale, crystal malt and some sugar. I've included some percentage bands to give you a guide. In terms of the power malt, I would really suggest that you upgrade to something like Maris Otter. Because this is a malt forward style, this becomes more important for a better level of flavour. 
It should also be made known that this style is actually excellent as a single malt brew and can also be made up as a smash beer. The colour is simply governed by the crystal malt that you use. Naturally if you want this to be dark then simply use a darker EBC of crystal. Some recipe writers will also use a couple of different types of crystal malt to pick up more flavour notes. It really depends on what you're looking for. The third and final element is of course the sugar and the most commonly used sugar is brown which will contribute a little colour, molasses flavours along with a nice bump in alcohol. It is probably more common to use sugar of 10% in this style than anything else but up to 20% can be used without any ill effects. It should be noted that you will also see some people using other grains like biscuit malt. This is fine to use as a bump if you really want to push out those bready and biscuit flavours, but I would urge caution in using more than just 1-2% to and frankly if you are aiming for something authentic then this should not really be needed. I also see some homebrew recipes using Belgian malts like Special B and Abbey. As much as I agree that these will make a great beer, they are not ready to style, so if that is important to you, then avoid them. In regards to hops, naturally these should be local, so that means common types to use are East Kent Goldings, Fuggles, Challenger, Target and North Down. In terms of how these hop additions are used, it is most common to see a bittering addition at either 60 or 90 minutes, and then a flavouring addition at 15 minutes. Some brewers will also go with some flame out zero minute additions for aroma but because this style is usually something that needs a fair amount of conditioning time the effect will debatably be subdued by the time you drink it. Whilst I mention boiling it is an ideal time to also say that extended boils are commonplace in this style. As usual in brewing not everyone agrees on this practice but I believe that it is well worth experimenting with 60 and 90 minute boils for the same recipe to see what you personally prefer if either. The science behind this is that hop utilisation will be improved during a longer boil and that utilisation is lower in higher gravity warts. So a higher boil in a brew of this style could be seen as a balancer. The longer boil will also add additional layers of flavour due to caramelised sugars and other chemical reactions caused by a longer boil. You will also find that the longer you boil the darker your wort will become. Naturally much of this science is under continued debate, hence why I suggest you experiment yourself and make your own choices based on this experimentation. Let us now move on to yeast choice. The most important thing here is choosing a strain that will be able to handle the alcohol involved here. Good choices for regular liquid yeast would be WLP099, the super high gravity owl yeast from White Labs. This is an English type of yeast and true to its name it can ferment up to a rather heady 25%. And then we have Y Yeast 1028 London Ale. It's fair to say that not everyone likes this, but to my mind the berry esters and good attenuation make it a great choice. And for regular dry yeast, Fermentis SO4 is a good choice for some, as it adds a bready quality. If you don't like this, then Nottingham is well worth considering instead. Fake-wise, the absolute best choice in my opinion is Framgarden, followed by Ebergarden and Vosjanas. Framgarden can be very close to British yeast for sure, so go with this if you can. Special note also needs to be made over the conditioning time of an English barley wine, just like any other malt-forward strong beer. Your yeast choice will simply dictate this, and it is important to not waste any of this beer by drinking it too early. If you use regular yeast and you are in the region of 10% alcohol plus, then do yourself and the beer a favour and seriously try to hold on to the beer for at least a year before you start on it. Do not bottle it before this time, it will be best stored in bulk for better conditioning in a carboy or demijohn. In my opinion, having long term projects like this really is fun and gives you something great to look forward to. A beer like this will condition best at 14 degrees C, or 57 degrees Fahrenheit. If you cannot manage this, then just go as close as you can. It is important to ensure that the airlock is always topped up and that the beer is filled to the neck of your carboy. Alternatively, you can simply use quake yeast. I have used this for high gravity beers and wine, and generally speaking, a wait time of between four to six weeks is usually enough. Let us move on now to my latest brew of this style along with my tried and tested recipe. All calculations for my recipe were made with Brewfather for accuracy. 
This recipe is shared on the Brewfather Cloud database as well as within this video's YouTube description as a link and also in full. Brewfather can be used for free as long as you are happy with storage of just 5 recipes. For this brew I used the Grainfather 30 litre but you could use the same grain and volume of 15 litres or 7.7 .7 US liquid gallons for the Brewzilla 35 or other similar systems. If you keep the recipe at this volume then it can be brewed with a single standard mash. If you find that the mash is too tight then feel free to use some of the sparge water to loosen it up. Just remember to subtract it later. I did not have to do this personally but it was slightly on the thick side so I did a 2 minute stir halfway through the mash to loosen things up and to increase efficiency. You will note that this brew uses a 90 minute boil. I personally enjoy the effect this gives along with the slight darkening but as I said earlier be your own judge on taste. The hops selected for this brew are a classic combination that are popular with certain commercial breweries in England. They certainly work very well but if you cannot source all of these then here are some alternatives on screen. Just be very sure to dial in your own hops individual alpha acid percentages with the IBU score shown in the recipe rather than using the amounts in weight shown in mine. If you fail to do this then you will simply not be brewing the same recipe and it will not taste as intended. You will also see in the recipe that I'm using brown sugar. This is a very common addition in the commercial brewing of this style going back in history and to this day. Sugars are certainly commonly used in the UK just like in Belgium and you should not consider this as something that creates a substandard result. In actual fact the use of brown sugar adds a very nice taste dimension. I am simply stirring this granulated sugar into the boil. I am using a false bottom on my grain father. If you are not then I would suggest that you stir the bottom plate also to ensure that you do not get burning on the bottom. Due to the nature of this sugar compared to candy sugar this should require minimum effort. There is certainly no need to pre-dissolve this like I would suggest with candy sugar as it should melt down very quickly. As I am using a count of chiller I ran boiling hot water through it to pre-sanitize it during the boil itself. You could skip this and opt for running star sand through it before the brew. This is a good thing for the health of the copper also, so I'd certainly recommend that you do this. At least from time to time anyway. After the boil I cooled down the wort and transferred it into my conical fermenter. This is certainly not a brew that you want to use under pressure as part of the style is to have the fruity esters from the yeast. You will note in the recipe I am quoting SO4 yeast. Personally I use Framgarden Quick which is very suited to this style and will give me a very fast turnaround time. And finally I will now run through what you can expect from this recipe. Firstly this is not a dark English barley wine, this is a dark golden. Here is a clear review of the colour that you can expect on screen now. Of course this is an approximate but it's a fair guide. This beer is certainly a little spicy and quite fruity with a fruitcake like quality that feels like a great indulgence, despite not being as thick as some other higher alcohol beers on account of the sugar used. This beer has a dangerously high drinkability alongside its high alcohol, so be careful. This is something to brew and keep hold of as a treat. No matter which yeast type you use it will continue to improve with age. I once had one that I left conditioning for two years and then managed to stretch it out for another couple. The last bottle is always the best one, but as long as you give it adequate time the first bottle will be amazing anyway. Be patient and you will be rewarded. Naturally you can cut down on much of this time by using quick yeast, but it is still something to keep hold of as a treat. I do hope this video inspired more people to experience and experiment with this style. At one time poets called it the nectar of the gods. These were not empty words, let me assure you. If you would like to discuss this or any other beer related topic then why not head over to this YouTube channel's Facebook group. We have a very friendly and busy group made up of total beginners leading up to experts in various aspects of brewing. Everyone is welcome as long as they are happy to keep within the mature, friendly and helpful atmosphere of the group. This now brings this video to a close. If you have any questions then please let me know via YouTube or Facebook. I do hope that you found this video to be useful, interesting and enjoyable. If appropriate then please like this video on YouTube and if you've not done so already then please subscribe. I regularly post new content. Happy brewing!